So. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So first things first, I have handouts for y'all. They're very simple, but they're just kind of a little quick cheat sheet thingy. Awesome. Yeah, just pass them around. <laughs> Much easier. Uh, give me one of those. Cause it's 10% my notes. Uh, so martial art activities. I know a lot of you have already participated in some of those to some degree already, but uh, we're going to talk about what the various martial art activities are, there are available to you. We're going to let the folks that actually do them give you an idea of what they're about, except for one, because I don't have anyone that does equestrian here. Um, so what are your options? So we have chivalric combat. Uh, if you see the guys over here armoring up in heavy armor, that's going to be your chivalric combat. Think knights in armor, percussive blows. They do some amount of thrusting. Uh, they'll do big melees with spears and lots of other weapons. I'm going to wait till that fire truck's done. <laughs> I think we're good. We're just all imagining knights in shining armor. That's yes. What we're doing. Wistfully. <laughs> um, then we have our rapier combat. Uh, rapier is going to be steel combat. It also includes what we call cut and thrust combat, uh, which will be steel but with percussive blows. Uh, rapier is going to be a little bit more lightly armored. We're hitting less hard. Uh, if we want to compare the two, our chivalric combat is throwing full power blows with simulated weapons. Our rapier combat is mostly throwing reduced power blows with non-simulated weapons that are blunted and made safe. I say mostly because most of the thrusts we are doing would have been completely sufficient to put a rapier through you. Um, most Mainly it is the cuts that would be a bit iffy. Um, then we have archery. Uh, think bows and arrows. We have two types of archery. We have target archery and we have combat archery. Uh, so target archery is go out onto a field. You might be shooting a traditional archery target. You might be shooting a bunny that someone is dragging across the field on a rope or a picture of the Black Knight from Monty Python and you're shooting all its limbs off. Uh, it may be clout shooting where we're shooting up into the air trying to lob an arrow into a target on the ground. Um, and combat archery is just what you think. They will use safe combat arrows and they will be firing at people. Uh, typically done with our heavy or chivalric combat. Um, it's thuddy. It's fun. <laughs> um, we have thrown weapons. Uh, so think javelins, throwing knives, throwing axes. If it is an object and you can throw it at a target, it is a thrown weapon. We have siege weaponry. Uh, this is kind of a subset of that, and it's used mostly in melees. Uh, but think ballistas and catapults and trebuchets and things what like that, using simulated munitions to fire bundles of tennis balls made to look like rocks at people. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we have equestrian and then youth combat. Equestrian, uh, think people on horses doing everything from jousting, as we think of jousting, although usually with simulated lances, to quintain. Uh, quintain is more like a field sport in which you're trying to stick pigs, you're trying to take rings off of objects with the lance. It is kind of an obstacle and challenge course using a horse and a tool. Our youth combat entails many of the things you hear about here. It's done with younger folks. Uh, we have youth marshals specific to those forms of combat. And for young enough kids, we also have what we call boffer combat where they use padded weaponry instead of full weapons for the chivalric style of youth combat. Uh, so, how do we get involved in this? First, let's figure out what you're interested in doing. And to do that, I'm gonna let each of the people that does these types of combat talk to you about what they do. Uh, John, are you gonna talk about chivalric for a bit? So this is our chivalric combat marshal, John Drake. And he will be talking to you today about heavy combat. So, um, oh, yeah. oh sorry, mic. I didn't realize this mic. So, the recording. oh, perfect. Uh, so, um, heavy combat or armored combat or smaller combat are kind of usually all used interchangeably, and that is all the type of combat we do with the rattan weapons. Um, and rattan is a type of um, of bamboo, but it's solid. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't splinter; it kind of just pulps, like it gets all kind of like uh, we call it brooming out. 
And so if you fight a ton, you probably have to replace your sword every like, um, sometimes a month, sometimes six months to a year, depending on how much you fight and how hard you hit. Uh, and then we wrap it in tape. Um, we use other, we use other weapons too, not just swords. We have like axes and spears and stuff. We don't have any of that here right now, but, um, but we can use it to kind of recreate any type of medieval weapon. And then for that type of fighting, we have to wear, uh, we have to wear like solid armor. So we have to wear a metal helmet, uh, like these here. And then we have to wear, um, to wear rigid knee armor. You have to wear armor that protects your kidneys. Uh, and then you're technically, I haven't finished putting all my armor on, but you have to wear uh, forearm armor and elbows that are also solid. Um, and, then, and then a gorget, which is for neck protection. Um, and this, this type of fighting, I don't know if Twill already talked about rapier, I assume, is that? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So um, in, in armored fighting or heavy fighting, you definitely, we have to throw what's called, we kind of refer to a telling blow. So regardless of what armor you actually are wearing, like in pretend, you're wearing a helm kind of like this, but it wouldn't have the faceplate, would have just a nasal. And then you're wearing um, a chainmail shirt that goes to your elbows and then down to your knees. So the blow that, that would be considered good has to be hard enough to have killed or disabled someone through that armor. It's kind of a fuzzy thing, but tend to be tends to be a lot harder because you're considered to be wearing armored versus wearing armor versus uh, later when Twill talks about rapier that is considered to be unarmored, and so you don't have to hit very hard with that. Um, so a lot of the techniques and stuff we work on for heavy fighting is all about learning how to throw shot with power, um, which is why we wear all the protective gear so that we don't hurt ourselves or our opponents, right? So, so you get some bruises, but for the most part, it's not that dangerous, I think. Like, I think most combat in the SCA is uh, safer than high school sports. And not even, like, football. I think it's safer than, like, high school basketball, which is... I mean, this is the stats I've heard thrown out. Um, uh, and I'm going to be the marshal, so... Or I'm about to take over as the marshal, I assume. I applied for the position, but um, I'm the acting marshal. So if you all are interested, I definitely can talk to you about it. And I have some plans on, like, running some classes and stuff, and I'm going to start trying to bring a pal to practice, which a pal is a, a practice dummy um, that we can hit. It's a padded thing. So uh, starting probably, because I'm about to go to Penzik in a couple weeks, so probably starting in like mid-August, late, late August, I'm probably going to start like running actual heavy fighting classes at practice and having, coming out and showing everyone body mechanics and shot mechanics on hitting pels. Um, and then on, I think it's the second Tuesday of the month, we do a melee practice for the Barony, and the Barony has a war company, which um, is, a, is, a, is a unit that fights at wars and stuff. So they do training. We'll march around and stuff for that as well. What are wars? What? Oh, wars. Yeah, wars are uh, big week-long events we have. Uh, we, there's a couple of them a couple times a year of different parts of the country. And they have big battles. So talking to several hundred people on a side fighting each other. And there's mixed weapons. You have spears and shields and, and archery. And all fighting together is one. Um, and so we train for that on the second Tuesday. We train for those wars. Um, and I'm about Penzik War is a war in Pennsylvania, which happens at the end of July, early August. It's up in Pennsylvania. I'm about to go out for that, so I'll be gone for a couple weeks for that. But nice. Um, but Gulf Wars is only in Mississippi, and that's only about ten hours away or so. And then there's War of the Rams, which is in Kingdom. It's in the edge of. It's over in near Beaumont, Texas, and that's also a big melee event. So uh, melees are the team, the wars that we do. So um, any questions? Oh, you covered a lot of it. Yeah. What are the most common? Uh, probably sword and shield. Um, so, so this would be a sword, and then um, uh, if y'all hold on one, okay, yeah. So yeah, sword and shield is generally the most common. The learning curve is pretty easy for that because you have a lot of defense, um, and then and then the sword is just basic, uh, pretty easy to use. Yeah. So, so this is my shield. Um, which is a little on the larger side, uh, larger side, but this is like uh, on Stewart, which is our, the kingdom we're in, Texas, right? Is kind of known for bigger shields. So, but if you see, there's a couple other smaller shields over there. But yeah, sword and shield is the most common style. Um, it is personally my favorite style, also. So, um, and then this is my personal heraldry on it. So, so yeah. Any other questions? But we do specific like tournament style weapons. So we do, you mean like formats or? 
Yeah, so uh, we do a we, the SCA and generally does a lot of different formats of fighting. So we'll do tournaments that are like single limb. So like generally crown tournament, which is the biggest tournament every year or the most prestigious tournament in the kingdom usually is is usually a single limb two out of three. So that means like fight someone two out of three, get knocked out. But we'll do bear pits where it's just like someone holds the field and the next person comes on and you just fight until you lose. We'll do round robins where you fight everyone on the list. Um, and then sometimes there will be tournaments where you have to fight with different weapon styles. So you'll have to fight one round sword and shield, you have to fight in the next round, you have to fight with two swords, the next round you have to fight with uh, an axe or a two-handed sword. Um, so those tournaments are, are not that, uh, are pretty common too. So um, we definitely want, there's definitely a feeling amongst a lot of people that you should fight, be able to use, not just be a specialist and be able to be, have a diversity in your, in your fighting forms and learn to fight different weapons. So, um, yeah, cool. you good? Cool. Thank Wonderful. You. Yeah, no Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so next up, we're going to talk a little bit about rapier combat. Uh, so rapier combat is our steel combat. This is a rapier. You can all take a look at it at some point if you want. Uh, the armor requirements for rapier are actually quite simple. Uh, so we need puncture proof or puncture resistant protection on any vital area, torso, neck, underarm, femoral artery, right? If a sword breaks and it hits somewhere, we don't want it to be somewhere where someone might die or get seriously injured. Um, everywhere else, we want abrasion resistant except for the head, which needs to be puncture proof, but also rigid. Um, we're also wearing a gorget on our neck right here. Of the, uh, great uh, so that's still an experiment. Oh, oh, yeah. They passed part. They partially passed it. Okay, nice. Um, we wear a hood. The hood used to be a puncture proof. It is now abrasion resistant. Uh, it has been downgraded. Um, this just covers our head and back of head in case something goes wrong. Uh, my puncture proof armor right here is chainmail, but you'll see anything from chainmail to modern fencing jackets, although those are horribly uncomfortable in the Texas heat, to multiple layers of linen that will pass a punch test, uh, which you can ask your local marshal to do a punch test to make sure your gear is legal. Uh, they're not required, but we commonly fight with gauntlets. Yes. <laughs> There is a device called a punch tester. Its entire job is to determine the amount of force it would take on a pointed object to pass through something else. Uh, it's basically a long tube with a little drop weight in it that has a point on the end. You pull the drop weight up to the top of the tube, you drop it, and if it passes through the armor, the armor fails. If the armor stops it, the armor passes. Very simple object. You're welcome. Uh, so, I recommend gauntlets to everybody. While they are not required, the rapier can tear your fingers up pretty good. Sorry? Gloves, yes. The rapier can tear your hands up pretty good if you are not wearing some sort of glove or hand protection. This is not so much because other people are stabbing our hands, it is more because we are holding this lovely metal object with a single finger as the balance point, and that can really make some calluses and then wear them off again. Uh, if you are a man, you must wear groin protection. We do not provide that. So if you're coming out and you want loner gear, that's something you need to bring yourself. It's not fun to share those. Um, but we do have loner armor for all of our rapier equipment and loner blades for you to practice with. Outside of just a single sword combat style, we fight with dagger. We fight case of swords or two weapon. We will fight with bucklers and shields. We will fight with rigid parry devices. Think like a cane, a stick, something of that sort. And what we call soft parries. A soft parry could be a rope, it could be a cloak, it could be any number of things. Anything that is soft will not protect your hand from a thrust and will be able to move a weapon out of the way. Uh, so we have rapier melees as well, just like the chivalric combatants do. In a rapier melee, you could get 100 folks on either side. We'll have small unit tactics trying to find ways to get rid of our opponent. Uh, we can have small melees of three to seven fighters, depending on the melee and the number of people that will be there. Uh, and here in Bringwalad, just like the heavy fighters, our war company practices once a month, though we may move to twice a month in melee practices to try to help our war company get better when we go out and fight. 
uh, in rapier, we do what we call calibration. So we want to determine when a blow is both legal and safe. So if it's too hard, that's not safe, right? That can injure someone. Even if the blade doesn't break, a, a blow that's too hard can bruise you badly. It can crack a rib. It's not fun to get hit by. I have been knocked down by many a sword and it's not enjoyable. Uh, but at the same time, we want what's called positive pressure. So a light touch would not be sufficient for a legal blow to us. We want a touch that both touches us and presses in slightly. That pressure is what we're feeling for when we're fighting. And that's what a good blow would be. Uh, we also have what we call push cuts, draw and draw cuts. A push cut is a placement on the arm and pushes through with full contact for at least six inches. A draw cut is the same thing, but pulling back across the, the body. Make sense to everyone? Do we have any questions? So your local rapier marshal is Udita over there. Udita, please raise your hand. Uh, Udita will have waivers. So if you're new and you're not yet authorized and you don't have a blue card, no blue card. You must sign a waiver, right? So you will find Udita, you will go over there, you will sign, yes, I am playing with swords and I might get bruised tonight. And then you're good to go. It's pretty simple. Now, I said authorized, what does that mean? This applies for all of our martial combat styles and we're gonna talk a little more in depth about it in a second. But all it means is you've gone through with one of your marshals of whatever style you do and they have determined that you are safe to perform combat in the SCA. We'll review that fully in a second, but first, I'm going to let Gavin come over and talk about archery. Gavin and Teresa, woo! Sorry, Gavin and Wintiliana. <laughs> It's okay. It's hot. And if, if you find that you need two hands, it just occurred to me that you could stick the microphone in that quiver. Oh, that works good. That's perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, you may like stand a little closer line. to it. There you go. <laughs> so, since we've been talking about combat, we will kind of transition into combat archery. Um, combat archery is basically an extension of heavy fighting. All the armor requirements are the same as heavy fighting. You do not need to be heavy authorized to do combat archery. It is a separate authorization. Um, for that, basically, you need either a bow that is 30 pounds or less, or a crossbow that measures under 600 inch pounds, which is some kind of mystical math they use by drawing a certain amount of distance <laughs> and multiplying it by the weight. Yes. Entertaining. Um, <laughs> The arrows and bolts we use for combat are blunted with a rubber ball and they have an anti-penetration device on the back so they don't penetrate the helmet if they bounce off the ground. Um, basically very similar in design for both crossbow and for longbow. And basically all of the weapons we have here can be used for both combat and target archery. Um, so this is a 30 pound bow. You can use standard wood arrows and take it to the target range and shoot it at the target range just as easy as you can on a combat field. Same with the crossbow. <laughs> just a lot of the crossbows will be both. So you can do both combat and target at the same time. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> We're freaking um, out the marshals. Since we don't have anybody here from throwing weapons, we can kind of transition that briefly. Um, we do. We do? Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know we got in a throwing range. Okay. So we'll so we wanna <laughs> we'll finish so, up with uh, Yeah, let's finish up with this and we'll we'll, we'll bring it. Um, um so, well, so you cover target. So some of the drawbacks of combat archery, I'll tell you right now, is that obviously we can't come out and be shooting at the heavy fighters during a regular pit. Okay. The city this, don't let us do that, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> we can do shooting at bobs, which is basically target shooting with, as in full armor and with combat equipment. Um, combat archery is usually only during melee events, obviously not during one-on-one -on -one tournaments. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Okay, but how not fun would that be? Uh, not for us. They joked about um, from the sidelines. Yeah. Um, but for melee events, so you're talking wars. So whether it's 
any of the wars they mentioned, Gulf Wars, Penzig, Battle of the Rams, uh, War of the Rams, or um, sometimes we also have some events like Hell's Gate's uh, Commander's Crucible is a melee event. Uh, usually they do melee there, sometimes with combat archery, sometimes without, same with Siege, as well as um, usually um, Fitting God. Yes. War of, War of Ages. War of Ages, thank you. Four of Ages is usually also they do melee there as well, and we can also do combat archery there as well. So sometimes you can have some melee events, events that have melee fighting, or we can also just show up in their stuff and get to shoot at somebody. Um, <laughs> usually it ends up being at the bigger wars. Um, so the melee does have some loner uh, bolts. Yes. We really don't have a whole lot of bows that are available. I think there's two or three of this style bow Maybe. and the baronial equipment. Um, so. One of the big expenses is just the outlier cost. One arrow, approximately for tip, um, wow, it's like two hundred two dollars and fifty cents per arrow. That was before inflation. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, for that style arrow. For either one, basically, it's about two fifty. The, the you tips, buy them in you buy it in kits, basically yeah. in pieces, and you assemble it yourself. You can buy them pre assembled, but of course, when the price goes up, it's like five dollars each. Yeah. And mind you, when we go to war, <laughs> I, I take on average between. Uh, the minimum is fifty to one hundred, and that will that's just yeah. one battle. And you you basically shot them all. You have to get them all inspected again. There are war companies that will bring totes, hundreds oh. and hundreds and hundreds of arrows and bolts, and it, it's a fairly decent expense. Um, everything gets inspected before and after each battle, so all of the arrows that are flown during that battle all have to be collected and reinspected before they're allowed to be shot again. So there, there are a lot of safety rules in place for combat archery, obviously, because we're shooting at people. <laughs> um, um, but with that, yeah, so that's, that's some of the other stuff about combat archery. Combat archers are awesome. Everybody hates combat archers, unless they're on your side. And then they love us. Because there's not a melee battle I haven't been in where they're like, archers, we need archers over here. Yeah, no. And, and, and being able to snipe from behind the war company and working with the war company is so much fun. I can't tell you how much fun. It's working with the heavy fighters, but also just being that hype behind where you snipe the other side. You, you will definitely hear me giggle whenever I shoot. Whenever I shoot, whenever I shoot so much. It is um, so fun. It's so much fun. Just being able to, to see that spearman and oh, just hit him right in the face. Oh, there's Especially nothing, nothing like it. If it's a res battle, so <laughs> they have to go back and resurrect and then come back to the line, and they don't realize at what point they're actually engaged and in range. <laughs> You keep taking them out. You keep taking them out. Yeah. I definitely know that spearman of fear at the end of the day. Yeah. Use <laughs> <laughs> easy targets. <laughs> um, okay, so combat archery, target archery. Obviously, target archery, bring a lot of you staff practices weekly. We currently do not have a marshal. Um, Gavin and I are both authorized marshals where we can actually make new marshals. So if you're interested in archery, if you have experience with archery, knowledge of archery, if you're interested in being trained to be a marshal, please come see us. Um, there are practices nearby, even though Jingle is not currently running our archery practice, both Finninga, which is just south of us in um, San Marcos, they're running practices as they well do as- the, the, the monthly oh, yeah. all practice that's, um, that they do archery and throwing weapons and- In New Brompels? Yes, yep. New Brompels at, at the- um, New Braunfels runs on spare site. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, they, so they'll have that set up for, for target and for thrown weapons. Target archery and thrown weapons. I'm about you. I'm talking about combat. Yeah. Hell's Gate. Yeah, yeah Hell's Gate. I was like, next was Hell's Gate. So, so you can either head south to Finningoth practice or you can head north to Hell's Gate practice. They're running practices on Sundays at um, Sir Malguin and Willow's place outside. Um, uh, um, Copper's it's Cove. Just, Copper's Cove. Cove. It's, it's yeah. just south of Copper's Cove. Um, I want to mention, related to when you're looking for a marshal, um, the new indoor site that we've talked about, there is an outdoor area right next to the building that apparently the VFW has used for archery in the past. So there's potential that we can also have it kind of in combination with our other marshal activities. Um, but like, we need somebody uh, who's willing to get authorized to, to spearhead that. Uh, but it's very exciting for the potential. He and I are going to be out of kingdom for till later day. Yeah. We're yeah. heading up to Pensick and taking the long, slow ride there and a slow ride back. So, Fun. Um, we'll be back uh, later today. Yeah. Oh. So we'll be here for the fall season. Um, we'll be back for fall. Um, so that's combat targets. 
uh, Target. Uh, we went over bows for Target. So not only long crossbow, longbow, you can do recurves. You can even do breakdown. We can you can use break breakdown recurves. Nothing with training wheels. No modern, no modern bows. No sights. No peeps. No balancers. No any of that fancy stuff. <laughs> yeah, no training wheels. Um, what else? Uh, siege. We kind of briefly mentioned siege. Siege engines are. They, we currently do not have one in Bringlewood. There are other groups that have siege engines, and it takes multiple people to run an engine. So they are usually always eager and looking for people to help them, you know, set up and run a siege engine. Yeah. So siege in the SCA is also used during melees for heavy combat. Um, we will get out there and set up a line of siege engines. Um, both ballista and trebuchet style weapons. Uh, so we're swinging rocks and giant arrows in, at the enemy. Mm -hmm. And again, that is a lot of fun, is you, especially if you can get them all to fire at the same time. You just have a whole like barrage of <laughs> rocks going over the wall. Mm -hmm. Especially at big yeah. wars like Gulf Wars and Penzik, where they have a fort set up. And half the army staged inside and half the army staged outside. And you're basically lobbing wet, um, rocks into the people inside, in, the, in, inside the castle. Um, yeah, yeah, also no, War the, the War of the Rams, like, too. Yeah, yeah no. War of the Rams, too, because they, yeah, they don't take it. And that also requires full um, heavy armor. You have to beat the armor requirements for that as well. Um, if I can, I'm sorry, Please. I had a, I just remembered last year at War of the Rams, um, they also had like siege classes. Yes. Because it's hard to do siege engines in the park. Yes. Right. Um, so a lot of the wars will also have classes where you can like learn and train and, and, and get, get off, which is awesome. Yeah. So for, yes, thank you. Yeah. So authorization classes. So for siege, you have to be siege authorized to be able to help run an engine. Obviously, we also mentioned combat archery. You have to be combat archery authorized to get on the field to shoot combat archery at people. You don't have to be combat archery authorized to shoot at the target. So you can start practicing before you get in full armor and get on the field and get your authorization, which requires actually getting, you know, having a marshal, working with a marshal to watch you on the field during an actual battle and getting that first authorization shot. Yeah. Um, you do not need authorization to shoot target archery. You have to have authorization to be an ar target archery marshal, but you do not need authorization to shoot target archery. That's okay for everyone, including you. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, Let's you. Well, we will. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Zakaria. I love throwing weapons. Um, <laughs> it, to the point that I have a pen. Anyway, um, so um, axes, uh, javelins, I do not do well with javelins, but they're a thrown weapon. There's actually a, a plethora of different types of thrown weapons that are being tested right now to get incorporated into thrown weapons. Um, really cool things about throwing weapons you just got to show up usually they have loner gear um you know we're just talking a couple of axes and a javelin or a spear a spear and um they're thrown at station generally stationary targets but people have gotten creative and like have moving animals that you have to hit for extra points and things like that which is so much fun um and you know um you know, people get bored at just throwing the axes. I don't, but people, some other people <laughs> get bored. At, they're just throwing the axes at a target. So they have different things like they'll make a board where it's like tic-tac-toe yeah, and you have to get them. And then they have different point schedules. So like any event that you ha see thrown weapons, you don't need, you're wearing your clothes, you show up, each, they let you, they inspect the marshal in charge, will tell you the rules. They'll inspect your weapons and boom, you're in it. And, you know, so you don't have to really worry about that. Right now, I've got about 30 axes, so I'm, like, invested. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then we, wherever there's archery, it only takes 10 foot to make a thrown weapons field for axes. So it's really not a big deal. I think it takes about 15 for the spears, so it's not that much more. So wherever this is, they can very easily be the thrown weapons if there's a thrown weapons marshal. And so that new place that we keep talking about, we're also you know, thinking, whoo, if we if we get them in, then uh, the thrown weapons axes are just, you know, another step and um, trying to get the marshal there and everything's good. So uh, axes are super easy. They're super fun, real easy to pick up. And uh, that's that's what I wanted to share. So you said you had 30 axes. When did you get started? 
Oh, um, not very long ago, not actually. Even a year ago. <laughs> it wasn't even a year matter. ago. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> How many do you have now? Uh, two. <laughs> two. See? Okay. Um, and, uh, not you an know. Addiction. She can stop whenever she wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm limited by my pocketbook. It's real easy. I can stop. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, the marshals will inspect, you know, make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself. Uh, cause there, it's possible to throw with other people. And then we do the favorite part that I have is you clink your weapons. <gasps> my gosh, that is my favorite part <laughs> in the wide world. And, um, and that's the start of our, our group. And then we're further away. You throw the marshal calls hands. You kind of do jazz hands, you put hands in the air, make sure you don't have anything left to accidentally throw at someone when they walk to go get their, retrieve their weapons. They'll tell you to go retrieve your weapons. You go pick them up and you get ready to throw it again. Usually you're baking in the sun. So you, you know, rotate out and go get someone else to, to come, come play. And then you can come back up and get your turn again. So any other questions? So, just for general knowledge, bows like this you can get on Amazon for about six bucks. It's a fiberglass bow, good starter thing. Knife, axe, and spear, primarily knives and axe, are very popular right now. We were at Bass popular. Pro the other day and they have an entire section of different style axes mm -hmm. and throwing knives that are entirely usable in the SEA. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I mean, you can get the equipment to do it. Pretty Very much inexpensive. Yes. And we're not enabling it. <laughs> <laughs> and this definitely is an area that most people have loaner gear. You just go throw the loaner gear, it's already been inspected. You throw it and then uh, do it again. Do you have a question? have a weight limit for target. Wait, weight limit for target? No. It's usually um, it's whatever you can comfortably pull safely. It's safely pull. It's safely pull. Um, if, one if you're my, shaking when you're pulling, it's too. Strong. Well, one of my friends is a is a bow bowyer. He makes bows, and he made a bow that had a 120 pound draw. It was a it was an English long bow, made in period design and power. I drew it once and got a shot off. I didn't get to draw a full draw on it because <laughs> it was so hard. Um, but Robert actually it was. Um, was it uh, Robin of Bjornford? Oh, okay. yeah. It was the archer, yeah. huh? I've drawn that bow. What yeah. Yeah. He named the bow Jesus because when you <laughs> drew it, you get about a halfway back and you go, Jesus! <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah. about it. <laughs> um, target archery is also a lot of fun, not just for shooting for practice, but also for thank you. Thank you. Um, not just shooting for fun, but there are also tournaments. Uh, most of the different baronies, different groups hold championships, just like with Rapier, just like with Heavy. There's usually ar so archery tournaments, archery championships. There's a Kingdom mi Missile Champion as well. The Royal Huntsman. Hunt Royal Huntsman. Sure. Oh, yeah. We recently changed it to be more inclusive. Um, We've also added thrown weapons, or is now the yes. Golden Spear, I think, is what the thrown weapon is called. Golden Axe. Golden Axe. Golden Axe. Oh, no, they're, yeah, they, they've yeah. added kingdom yeah. level Axe competitions. Axe Spear and Knife, yeah. So there's lots of inner kingdom competitions as well as inter kingdom competitions where not only do we do fun shoots, but they're actually set parameters of distance and the type and size of target, and those scores are recorded in a database. And your score is actually compared to other archers throughout the known world, so you're actually competing with people out of kingdom. Yeah. Um, with that, there's also Royal Round, which your score is calculated over time and it you tassels depending on what, what level, what score you at average, your top average of your three. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of in, uh, incentive and, and, and fun little things to earn, as well as baronial awards, our Midwest Kingdom awards. Uh, we do have a grant level, which is our core, which you'll see done by their white racers with black stars or their white with gold and black. Um, yeah. Carter, thank you. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's the hardest thing. Um, students to our doors are Arcarius. You'll we'll see them with red bracers with the black star. So we know that there is student to our door. We currently do not have a peerage. Like, you know, we have the Knights and Laurels and the Masters of Defense. We have just been granted by the BOD. There is a peerage coming for missile activity. We are super excited. We do not know the name of it yet. We don't know what the insignia is going to be yet. We're waiting all that for... The heralds are negotiating right now. Yeah, so we're <laughs> eagerly waiting the outcome of, of what our new peerage is going to be. But we are finally getting our own peerage for missiles. So we are super excited. 
and really looking forward to seeing what how the Mystic community really takes off and, and gets more of them. Um, real quick, if anyone is interested in equestrian, I'll touch that real quick. Um, both of us are horseless equestrians. <laughs> if you own a horse and you're interested in the equestrian activities, come talk to us. We can hook you up with the. We, there are local SCA. Um, equestrians, they do run practices, they do other equestrian activities. We can definitely get you in touch with those people. If you do not own a horse, ground crew, they cannot do the equestrian activities without ground crew. Ground crew is essential. If you have horse experience or you enjoy working with horses, you actually can go and help and you don't have to own a horse. Sometimes I can earn you some saddle time. Okay, I'm um, just saying. But so if you're interested in the equestrian activities, please come see us. And there is even authorization for ground crew as well as for mounted equestrian activities. There's authorizations for that as well. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Yeah. What's the coolest thing you've seen in a pride Ooh, for, for missile? I think that handmade quiver was really nice. I, I'm, I'm obviously in the handmade quiver. It was a really beautiful handcrafted leather quiver. Mm. It, was, it was gorgeous, beautifully tooled. Um, also a full set of target arrows um, because target arrows are not cheap as well. Usually... One of the requirements, one yeah. of the only really requirements for archery other than no training wheels is you have to use wood shafted arrows with uh, feather fletching. You cannot use fiberglass arrows or carbon arrows or anything other than wood chip. That's really the only rule. You can use breakdown bows. You can use any type of recurve or like that. That's fine, but the arrows do have to be Which then tend to break. So yeah, getting gifted a a, a set of um, really good, usable target arrow with target arrows is, is a very nice, very, very nice. Okay. Which one? Best Pro had the actual wood arrows. That yes. was a half a dozen for $60, I think. $60 for half dozen. Feather Fletch, not tipped, ready to go. So, I mean, that, that wasn't bad. Yeah. Uh, they weren't tipped. No, they were, they were not tipped. Yeah, but yeah, not bad. Um, anything else? Anything else? Feel free to see us if you have any questions. Oh, well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Gavin and Wintiliana. All right. Uh, so, it's been mentioned already. We have equestrian combat. Uh, we don't have a lot of that around these parts. I know there's some folks doing it down in Bjornsborg. Uh, I know there's some northern and central folks that do it. Uh, the key is you have to have access to a horse. Um, whether that is your horse or someone who has a horse that will let you use it, you still need to have a horse, which is what makes equestrian tough. But it does exist, and if you're interested about it, there is a handbook for it on our Marshall page, or you can come talk to me at some point, and I can get you introduced to the right people. Um... For everything we've talked about, as I said, there is youth combat. Uh, we do not currently have a youth chivalric marshal. However, for the rapier side, uh, my lady Nadia is a youth marshal. I am in the process of becoming one. And uh, Calvin Tittle, Tittle is also a youth marshal. Uh, next up, how do I get authorized? That's, that's the big question, because everyone who fights wants to be able to go do tournaments, go do melees. That requires authorization. So first, attend practices and work with established fighters, build your skills. Second, read the following, and this is in your activity handbook, but it is the handbook for your activity such that you understand the rules and conventions under which you will be fighting, right? The handbooks are not particularly long. Go read the handbook, learn what it is to be safe when we're fighting, what the rules are. Next, read the Onstior and Marshall's handbook. This just tells you the greater rules you are working with under. What is the structure? Why do you have to listen to a marshal? Marshals aren't calling your blows for you. Marshals are only here for safety, to make sure you and your opponent are safe. Then you need to find an authorizing marshal for your discipline, get together with them, and they are going to test you to make sure you know the rules and to make sure you are practicing your art safely. Whether that is they're going to have you fight another fighter or themselves for a little bit so that they can get you through different styles, make sure your calibration's good. Uh, for archery, they're going to make sure that all your equipment is okay. They're going to make sure you're shooting safely. Um, so you'll get together with your marshal. They'll test you on the rules. They'll test you to make sure that you're doing everything else correctly. You'll move forward. Finally, you're going to the Onstiorin authorization website. You create an account in the Marshal at Authorization system, and then you're going to take that authorizing marshal, you're going to put their name in, 
and you're going to say, I want to request an authorization from this person. And they will give you your authorization. That's the whole process. It's very easy. It can all be found on the Earl Marshall's page on the Oscar Run website. Uh, next up, who are my local marshals? You've met several of them tonight. Uh, Chivalric was formerly Wilhelm von, von Bellatrix, although that is open for applications. It is soon to be John Drake. Uh, he has deputies. Gotts von Tottenberg is one. Gertz von Tottenberg is one. Um, then Rapier. We have Utica is our Rapier Marshal. Nadia Ramthener is a deputy to Utica. I am a deputy to Utica. Alaric Steer and Don Santiago. We have plenty of Rapier deputies. There should never be a problem with keeping a rapier <laughs> practice going due to a lack of a marshal, because there's loads of us. Um, we do not currently have an archery or thrown weapons marshal, although I do know there is someone interested in putting in for thrown weapons right now, so that can start up soon. Uh, finally, more information. Uh, if you have more questions about this, and you're like, eh, I don't need to talk to someone about it, I just want to read about it. The first place you're going to go is the Ansioran Earl Marshall's webpage. The link is here on your Marshall at Activities handout. Uh, you can easily Google it and find it online. Go there. It has all of the handbooks and all the resources. There's an FAQ to answer any questions that you may have. Finally, for local questions, go to the Barony of Bringlewood website. Once you get there, you can either contact your local marshal to ask them a question by email, or you can see when your local practices are, what's going on in the local area through the calendar. Does anyone have any questions on martial art activities? I have one thing to add. Yeah. Um, speaking of looking for activities and practices, on onstr.org forward slash groups, there are now, you can expand it, uh, regional calendars of activities. And so there's a southern regional calendar that has all the group's calendars lumped into one. Um, so if you're if you're wanting to cast out and like find what's nearby, that's another resource that's available. Especially if you're looking for practices that we don't currently have. Oh, one other thing. Um, the Shire of Finningoth is hosting a monthly regional practice. Anyone in Southern Region and Central, whoever wants to come, is welcome to go down to the Shire of Finningoth once a month on a Sunday. They host a regional practice. They have rapier, wow. heavy archery. Uh, they want me to be doing dance down there. They do a stitch and ditch beforehand where they do sewing in a little schoolhouse area. It's air conditioned. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a good time. A lot of people went out this last time and I had a great time out there. All right. So thank you very much for coming to the Martial Arts Activities 101 Newcomers Academy class. Uh, the next one up is going to be Garb, Heraldry, and Persona. Um, Garb, Heraldry, and Persona. Uh, we will be publishing the date for that soon. Uh, if you want to watch any of the martial art activities or you have direct questions about a specific thing, Gavin and Wintiliana are still over there. Orazio is here. He can answer many questions. I can answer questions. John Drake is over there for Chivalric. And all of our rapier fighters you'll see behind me over here. Thank you for coming out and have a good evening. Thank you.